And welcome back. Be honest, do you think your relationship or marriage could survive without sex? That's right. No hunching, no hanky-panky, no nothing. Well, that's a reality for some couples out there. They actually make it work. We have Dr. Angela Jones here in the studio to explain how the hell that works. No it works. sex in a marriage? Unfortunately, some couples have to resort to this space in their life. I'm not saying that it's, it's okay just because you say it's okay. Usually these kind of couples have reasons as to why they decide that. Give me some examples of why. So, of course, health issues, mm -hmm. right? Either, you know, both of you are dealing with health issues, libido issues, maybe medication that you're taking is making it hard for you to have an erection. Um, having children, it changes your body, right? So, the problem is is that whenever it's mismatched in the, in the relationship, and how do you determine if this is a sexless relationship or not, if one person has high libido and one person has none. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to determine if you want it to work, it has to be a mutual decision, but it has to be a mutual decision that both of you are happy to do. Has this resulted, though, if they've agreed upon it, mm -hmm. but one party's like, okay, I am tired of blue balls, so <laughs> I am getting a divorce, I'm moving on. You know, the thing is, is that if you talked about it and both of you mutually agreed on it, then you guys have to continue. The key is communication. You have to continuously communicate. Mm -hmm. The thing that people don't understand is that a sexless marriage doesn't mean that you don't have any, that you don't have intimacy. You're still talking, you're still cuddling, touching, doing a lot of different things, and actually still being very close to one another. But if one person is saying, I can't do this, this is not going to work, I would first, of course, say, try to go to a sex therapist first. Try to see what things you can do, and then you guys ultimately will have to make a decision in regards to, like, the status or the relationship. Like, can we do this or can we not? Should couples be in fear that their relationship will diminish or turn into essentially a business partnership where they're there just mm -hmm. for the kids or they're just for finances but intimate intimacy is not there sex not there yeah, when you're having a business transaction, you guys are just two people in the night passing by each other. That is just a partnership. And if that is okay with you guys, I guess you can say that, but the key thing is that you have to find joy and happiness in your relationship. And if you find joy and happiness in that situation, which I don't really see how that would work, then sure. But the key is there has to be some sort of intimacy happening. I have to feel close to you. Mm -hmm. I have to feel like we're close. We're like no other. We're, we're soulmates. And sometimes some relationships go through a dry spell. It could be years or it could be a couple of months. And we have to be able to talk through those times to see, okay, what's next for us. Can we actually survive this? And so how did many in, in you know, long ago, mm -hmm. uh, baby boomers like grandparents, right. well, past baby boomers like our, our, our grandparents mm -hmm. did, because you would go into, into their houses and they'd have separate rooms. They would have separate rooms. But they were just like happy and you never know anything was wrong. Well, that's if they were happy, right? right? But the separate rooms was a cultural norm. Like, you didn't want to show your kids that you guys were sleeping in the same bed. It was about manners, right? And that's, things changed. So when, you say grandma is... They creeping in the middle of the night, going to grandpa's room. That's right, or he's creeping into her room. But you know, the thing is, as time has changed, women have found they have more, I mean, we have more autonomy over our body. We've always had autonomy over our body, but we feel freer to say it. Mm -hmm. So back then, it was an obligation. I have to have sex with my husband, and that is that, regardless if I'm enjoying it, if I'm in pain or not. So it was almost like a sacrificial act a lot of women had to do in order to keep the marriage okay. But that, that didn't determine if they were happy. The problem is, is our culture determines, like, how often you have sex is supposed to determine how happy you are. But I know a lot of people who have a lot of sex, and they're miserable with their spouse. Mm -hmm. They're just doing it because that's the only thing they actually know how to do well. So it, it doesn't really determine if this is a good relationship or not. It's really the intimacy and the closeness. All right, Dr. Angela Jones, always good to see you. You just shattered my... But don't do it. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're talking about the grandparents are going... Hey, no, they creeping. They creeping, I say, I'm sorry. Oh, God, Father <laughs> Jesus, help.